Now, Omid Kobi did an article about why Prince Harry has every reason to ask questions about people around the Queen. And now, members of the squad, I thought that I should share it with all of you. I think it's quite just a little bit informative. And members of the squad, I just wanted to, you know, tell you about the, you know, the tabloids were so outraged at the fact that Harry did an interview with Hodder. And the reason they were angry is practically the main reason is always because of the fact that they have zero access to Harry. Seeing an American interviewing Prince Harry is too much for the tabloid to take because normally they are the ones who do these kinds of interviews with members of the royal family. To them, it's only okay if you give interviews to the Daily Fail, the likes of the tablets owned by Rupert Murdoch. That's the only thing that is acceptable to them. They don't like it when they see the likes of Prince Harry doing interviews with American interviewers, broadcasters, because they feel like, first of all, they own Prince Harry. They still feel that way. They still feel that way. Let's face it. That's how they still feel. If you hear them talk, if you see what they're saying, that's practically how they are. They still think they own Prince Harry. Despite chasing his mother to death, they still think they own Prince Harry. Despite bullying his wife to the point she thought about taking her own life, they still think they own Prince Harry. Now allow me to quote what was said by Omid Kobe in his article. Now he said this and I quote, For an interview that gave such little away, the days of hysteria following Prince Harry's appearance on NBC's Today Show was over the top to say the least. Note that the vain popping commentary and screaming front page headlines were much of a surprise. Pearl clutching and folks outrage over anything Prince Harry and Meghan do or don't do has become a regular fixture on the royal beat these days. As it is for coaches to be running around the Windsor estate. And that part is true. And despite all the tantrums, the Duke of Sussex revealed almost nothing about his fractured relations with Prince William and Prince Charles, dodging questions about his father and brother and only vaguely admitting that of course he misses his family. And I say before in this podcast that, I, that I've been making that why would anyone in his reasonable in his reasonable mind, ever speak to someone, someone who calls himself your brother, who authorizes his employee to go out to a courtroom to issue a statement against your wife in favor of a tabloid that has caused Prince Harry's wife so much mental health distress. Why? A tabloid that has been responsible for bullying Prince Harry and Meghan to uplift Prince William and Kate. That just shows complicity. And members of the squad, Prince Harry is right to keep his pace with Prince William. Now, as I continue the article, it says this, if anything, Harry appeared to be more guarded and media trained than ever with his words. It was something I also noticed of the prince while in the Netherlands last week covering the Invictus Games. Nevertheless, it was his comment about the Queen that had everyone, including Downing Street, rushing for the smelling souls. I'm just making sure she's protected and got the right people around her, Prince Harry told interviewer Hoda of his grandmother. After describing a really nice reunion at Windsor Castle alongside Meghan, it was, as the tabloids interpreted, an incendiary attack on his family. That's what the tabloids said. But really though, Perhaps the uninformed, but as someone who got closest to the story of Harry's royal departure, it was certainly not my first thought. Now, the reality is, since the passing of Prince Philip one year ago, as Omid Scobie continues to explain, the Queen is living by herself. While Prince Charles, the Cambridges, and others stop by for visits, the people surrounding the monarch on a daily basis, ADs, courtiers, and household staff responsible for every aspect of her life are all employees of the royal institution. 
And it's at the hands of some of these same people that Harry experienced some of his darkest and most distressing moments as a working member of the royal family, as a senior member of the royal family. Now, Omid Kobi continues to say this. When I was interviewing sources for Finding Freedom in 2020, I remember how my jaw dropped when a friend of the couple gave me a play-by-play -play account of how the Queen's private secretary, Edward Young, went out of his way to prevent the couple from visiting the monarch in Sandringham, one of the only family members of Prince Harry and Meghan that they felt comfortable talking to at the time, ahead of their announcement to step away from being senior members of the royal family. It appears that as hard as Harry tried to arrange a time, his team was informed that the monarch was busy all week, as Prince Harry said this in the Oprah interview. The Queen, despite having been the one to invite her grandson, was told by Yang that the ones available diary dates were no longer free. It was also the Queen's right-hand woman and dresser, Angela Kelly, who, multiple sources told me, made it almost impossible for Meghan to have a necessary hair trial with her chosen wedding tiara, even standing up the Duchess to be and a hairstylist who had flown in especially at a pre-scheduled fitting. Prince Harry Sousa said felt it was a cruel attempt to put his partner in her place. Remember what Prince Harry said that they were beginning in the Oprah interview that there was signs whereby Megan was being told that she had to go back to acting, that the, this was signs for Prince Harry that it was going to be really, really difficult. And yet the tabloids shamelessly go on national TV to say, hey, Megan was welcomed. Remember uh, just a few days after Prince Harry and Megan's relationship became public, Prince Harry had to issue a statement condemning the racism that Megan was experiencing at that time he was his girlfriend. And now here we've seen how the likes of Angela Kelly, the tabloids are so happy to express their vitriol at how Angela Kelly and both Prince William collaborated to make sure that Megan had no access to a tiara that she was, you know, working on before her wedding date for a hair trial before her wedding. Do you see so many obstacles that were put in place for Prince Harry in his relationship with Meghan? I won't even go into the fact that a senior member of the royal family issued, I asked Prince Harry, had concerns about what would be the color of baby Archie's skin. Let's not forget about that. And now, members of the squad, you clearly see the obstacles that Prince Harry and Meghan had and continue to have even in their relationship. The constant bullying, the constant vilification that continues to this day, it happens time and time again, like routine. And I pray for the day that we can have peace as members of the squad. I pray for the day for Prince Harry and Meghan that this bullying would stop. I pray for that day to come. And members of the squad, I invite you to pray as well. Prayer is something extremely, extremely powerful. And now, as I continue the article, it says this. Days before permanently leaving the UK in March 2020, Harry told a close AD, and I quote from Omid Kobi, These people have their own agendas. They work for the institution and certainly don't care about us as a family. Apparently, that's what Omid Kobi says Prince Harry said. Princess Diana echoed similar sentiments in the years following her divorce from Prince Charles. And now, members of the squad. Time and time again, we hear how inside the institution of the monarchy is an environment where mental health and well-being is not prioritized. And yet, we see the likes of Prince William lecturing people on mental health, talking about mental health, when here we have Meghan in the royal family being bullied every single day and all of them remaining quiet to the point that a pregnant woman married to Prince Harry thought about taking her own life. It was that bad. Yes, it was that bad. Now, members of the squad. So, 
as I continue this article, says this. So while Prince Harry and Meghan and the Queen have been in regular, regular contact over the phone or virtually, the recent in-person meeting, which was purposefully kept a secret from all palace EDs, was Harry's first chance in a year to truly speak privately with his grandmother without fear of anyone overhearing or wondering in the background of a video call as they await to brief the tabloids. Because as I said, nothing leaks more than Kensington Palace. And they did it at a time when Prince William and Kate Milton were on vacation. It's important to remember that. Now, members of the squad, if Prince William had found out, you can be sure Harry and Meghan strip to the UK would have been leaked to the tabloids. As I continue with Omid Scobie's article, he says this, Having bravely faced a series of health and mobility issues, we often hear how the 96-year-old monarch is impressively getting on with her duties. But as a grandson and sixth in line to the throne, it will only be natural, natural for Harry to a question whether every person in the Hadeli orbit has her best interest at heart. Is being pushed to do too much? Is anyone telling her to slow down? Is the queen being pushed to do too much? Is there too much pressure to be at Platinum Jubilee events this June? Is she being properly taken care of? These are the kinds of questions any caring person would ask an elderly, elderly family member living alone or in a facility run by staff. And when you look at the famously and sympathetic institution the queen lives within, Harry has every reason to worry. I had to share with you this article because I think that it contains some really, really, you know, something that can make you think and make you think. And members of the squad, it's normal for a grandson to ask how his grandmother is. However, Tabloid turned it into some form of outrage. Outrage on Prince Harry's question that... He just wanted to make sure that his grandmother was okay. And we see that it's necessary. It's necessary. And Prince Harry did something noble by asking that question. It's what a loving grandson would do. And the fact that he was bullied for it is an indictment of the tablet. The same tablet that said they prefer the drunk Prince Harry. The same tabloids that say that that even question the fact that if the queen was senile just because the queen actually had a meeting with her beloved grandson. The tabloids have tried to paint that the queen has a bad relationship with Prince Harry and Meghan and clearly that's failing. People are not buying into it. Harry has a good relationship with the queen and despite my reservations about what I think of the fact that the Queen never said anything about to defend Meghan when she was being bullied. Irregardless of my personal thoughts, the fact is Prince Harry has a good relationship with the Queen. And members of the squad, I'm happy that, the Queen, that Prince Harry was checking up with the Queen on the Queen, the person that Prince Harry loves, his grandmother. And I want to say this, the tablets have no right whatsoever to bully Harry over the fact that Simply making sure, making a comment that he wanted to make sure that his grandmother was safe and that she was okay. That's what any grandson would do. The tabloids do not wish the queen well. They don't wish the queen well. They want this form of division so that they can sell papers to cause harm and profit from people's pain. They do not wish any single person well. That's how the tabloids behave. And keep praying for Prince Harry and Meghan. May they continue to thrive. May every single thing that they do become impactful, inspire others, and be successful. And with that, I hope you learned a lot in about this article. And I hope, tell me your thoughts about the article that I just read out to you, that Omid Scobie's article. This is a piece by Omid Scobie on why Prince Harry has every reason to ask questions about people around the Queen. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me what you came out of this, you know, podcast thinking about. With that and so much more, stay tuned to our next video. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and support our Evergreen family on YouTube. 
Love your family and stay tuned to our next video. Thank you for all your support again. Hello, members of Zisco Family TV. First of all, I want to say thank you for all your support that you give us to our channel. We don't take it for granted that you support this channel. I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for lending out your support and fighting against injustices, supporting Prince Harry and Meghan, showing them love. Love will always triumph over evil. And for that, I say thank you. Good will always prevail over bad. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for joining this community, this amazing community of Zesco Family TV. I love you so much, family, from the bottom of my heart. And I wish you all the best. May you have a great, great day. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, a lot of things. With that and so much more, stay tuned to our next video. Leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. Love you, family, always and forever. Sayonara.